This is the 30th video in our series looking at how to complete a basic setup and configuration of a Synology Network Attached Storage Device, or as they're more commonly referred to, a NAS. As the main aim for any backup strategy is to provide an insurance policy that will protect our data under any circumstances, we need to create both an on site and off site backup. In our previous video, we created a backup task that will, on a daily basis, back up all of the data stored on our NAS to an external USB hard drive. However, to also ensure that our data is not just backed up to an on site backup solution, we will now need to look at creating an off site backup. So, in this video, we will once again use Hyper Backup to make a backup of our data, but this time we will be backing up our data to a cloud based storage solution. For this demonstration, we will use Synology's Cloud 2, or as Synology like to call it, C2. However, please note that Hyper Backup also supports a wide selection of alternative online storage solutions, including Dropbox, Amazon Drive, Google Drive, and Microsoft Azure. While we have previously used other cloud based storage solutions, at the time of posting this video, we felt that C2 offered the best price to storage capacity for our needs. However, if you choose to use a different online storage solution, the same basic principles that you see in this video can be applied to that service. As you can see from the C2 website, Synology offer two different types of plans. Within plan one, there are three different storage options. However, it should be noted that unlike other storage solutions, under plan one, C2 will only allow us to keep backups for the last 30 days, which is why we need to ensure that we make regular on-site backups using our external USB hard drive. Plan two does offer a more flexible list of backup options, but as a home user with only a limited budget, using this plan to back up all of our data would be an expensive option. So to keep our costs down, but still have some sort of basic off-site backup, we have chosen to purchase the 300 gigabyte option from plan one. As a 300 gigabyte plan will force us to be selective about what data to include in our offsite backup, we intend to treat our offsite backup as an insurance policy should a catastrophic event affect our on-site backup, which means that we need to rank the data that we have stored on our NAS by its value and level of importance, then only back up the data which we deem as irreplaceable. So in this video, we're going to use Hyper Backup to create an offsite backup task. Then because we only have 300 gigabytes of online storage space, when we create our storage task, we will need to decide what data to include as part of our backup. As the final step, we will then monitor the creation of our first offsite backup and confirm its successful completion. In order to create an offsite backup task, we first need to sign into the Station Manager using our administrator's credentials. Now from the DSM's desktop, if we select Main Menu, and then from within Main Menu we locate and select Hyper Backup, because we've already created an on-site backup task, Hyper Backup does not show us the Backup Wizard. In order to see the Backup Wizard, we need to select Create which will present us with a pop-up menu that gives us two options, Data Backup Task and LUN Backup Task. We need to select Data Backup Task. A backup wizard will then be displayed. We are now presented with a list of destination types that we can use with our backup. If we scroll to the bottom of this list, we can see a list of all of the cloud services that Hyper Backup supports. However, as we will be using Cloud2 for this demonstration, we need to scroll back to the top of this list and select Synology C2 Cloud Backup. When we select Next, a pop-up window will open and we're asked to either sign in or create a new C2 account so that we can purchase a data plan. As we've already purchased a 300 gigabyte plan off camera, we just need to sign in using the username and password that we created when we signed up to our C2 plan. We're now asked to complete a simple security check that confirms that a human is trying to sign into this account. When our account opens, 
we are shown how much storage space we have available in our storage plan. As you can see, we are currently using 51% of our total storage space. This space has been used to back up a second Synology NAS that we own. In order to use C2 on this NAS, we need to grant Hyper Backup authorization to access our C2 account. After ticking the checkbox and then selecting Yes, we're asked to create a backup task. First, in the directory field, we need to give this backup task some sort of meaningful name and then select Next. We now need to choose which shared folders on our NAS we want to back up. As our C2 plan is limited to only 300 gigabytes, we will need to be selective about what we back up. This means we need to justify what data should be included as part of our offsite backup. A good method to use is to try and define what data you would consider to be irreplaceable. For example, you might consider the data stored in the finance, homework, public, software and photo folders to be difficult or impossible to replace. So you would add these folders to your backup task. However, for the data in the folders called manuals, time capsule, downloads, music and video, as this data will require more storage space and for us has a lower level of importance or value than say the family photographs or household finance data, we will not be including these shares in our offsite backup. Don't forget that we're using our offsite backup as an insurance policy in the event of a worst case scenario and we already have an on-site backup which is backing up all of our data. When we select Next, we are asked if we wish to back up the applications on our NAS. In this example, we will select each application and then choose Next. Under Backup Settings, we first need to give this backup task a name. We will leave task notification enabled as we will be looking at configuring email notifications in our next video. Bandwidth limitation is disabled, which means that when Hyper Backup makes its offsite backup, it can use as much bandwidth as it likes. However, if the offsite backup happens to run when users of our home network are also using the internet, Hyper Backup will adversely affect the speed of our broadband connection. So, broadband limitation allows us to set how much of our broadband connection Hyper Backup can use. Enable Backup Schedule allows us to define when an offsite backup is made. For this example, we will set Hyper Backup to make an offsite backup every day, but make the offsite backup at 3 o'clock in the morning. Enable Integrity Check Schedule allows us to set a time when our backup is checked to ensure that it has not become corrupted and that we can restore files from our backup. You can see that our integrity check will run every Saturday at 3.40 a.m. The final option within backup settings is client-side encryption. As we will be uploading our private data to third-party servers, we need to ensure that our data cannot be accessed by anyone other than ourselves. So by enabling client-side encryption, any data we send to Synology's C2 servers will automatically be encrypted before it's sent. As Synology will not have the decryption key, it should be nearly impossible for anyone other than ourselves to access the data we send to Synology's C2 servers. In order to enable client-side encryption, we need to create a password. It is a good idea to document the encryption password that you use. When we select Apply, we're informed that an encryption key will automatically be downloaded to our computer. We need to keep this encryption key in a safe place, as we're warned that by losing or forgetting the password and the encryption key, we will not be able to restore the data in our backup. Let's select Yes and wait for the encryption key to download to our computer. We're now asked if we would like to make a backup. Let's select Yes. As this is the first time that we're running this off-site backup task, Hyper Backup has to create a snapshot of our data. How long this process takes will be dependent on the speed of our broadband connection and how much data needs to be backed up. However, after the first backup, 
because Hyper Backup will be only making incremental backups, future backups will be a lot faster. An incremental backup is a type of backup where only the files that have changed from a previous backup are backed up. As we are backing up our data to a cloud-based storage solution, an incremental backup will help to reduce the amount of storage space required on Synology C2 servers. It will also help to use less broadband data. Once our first off-site backup has been completed, a notification will be sent to the desktop of DiStation Manager. So to recap, in this video we took a look at creating an off-site backup using Synology's Hyper Backup. Our intention with our off-site backup is to create an insurance policy to prevent the loss of all data should our NAS and on-site backup suffer some sort of catastrophic event. In order to make our off-site backup, we first had to purchase a cloud-based storage solution, which in this example was Synology's Cloud2 service. We then loaded Hyper Backup from within the desktop of DiStation Manager and used the backup wizard to create a backup task. However, as we only have a limited amount of online storage space for our backups, we were forced to be selective in what data was backed up to our off-site backup. We then ran our backup task and created our first off-site backup. In the next video in this series, we're going to take a look at configuring email notifications, which is a useful function to inform us when a specific task or event on our NAS has occurred.